Let's go! A win is a win is a win. The golden boot remains in Baton Rouge, but is a win really a win? Like, what happened? What? I still don't know, but LSU won, and I'm happy about it. If there's anyone that is happy that the golden boot is in Baton Rouge, it's me. Growing up in Arkansas, this rivalry means a ton, but we have to talk about the bad and the ugly, along with the good, because I, along with you, along with Tiger Nation, wants to beat the Aggies next week. And guess what? Vegas doesn't believe LSU can do it. They're 12-point underdogs right here at the start. So we're going to break down this game where LSU can get better, who stood out, Jay Ward, how about this ending heroics, blocking the kick and the tackle. We're going to talk about all of that today, so subscribe if you want the best LSU coverage on the web. Let's go! Time of possession, that was the one thing that stood out, right? LSU, 42 minutes to 18 minutes, and don't get it twisted. When you win time of possession, that means you're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. But, time of possession is not always a good thing when the other team outgains you. So, despite you having the football for 42 minutes compared to 18, Arkansas still had more yards than you did. So, they were more productive despite you having the football for three more quarters. So, yes, first thing, LSU's got to learn how to finish drives. And I'm not just talking about kicking field goals touchdowns. I thought TJ Finley was excellent, all things considered. You had the drops. You also had the the fumbles and whatnot. He didn't turn the football over at all. He had a drive where the game-winning touchdown was snatched away from him, and guess what? The Ponchatoula Cannon still delivered, baby. So, on my live chat, I was surprised at how many people were disappointed in TJ Finley's performance, but He was one of the bright spots. Also, Ty Davis Price is playing so much better than the other LSU running backs. Look at John Embry and Chris Curry's rushing performances. 15 carries between them for 34 yards. Also, this was a big game for Eric Gilbert. Now, I know he dropped the wide-open touchdown, and I hated it because... I called it out on Twitter that he was going to be open over the middle for a deep shot. Knowing Innsminger's play calling, I knew that they were going to go to it, and they couldn't connect. So I hope they go back to it because Eric Gilbert was a really good player on Saturday. And you got to give Terrace Marshall all the credit in the world. I know he had the fumble, but let's be honest. Led the team in targets, yards, and receptions. And he gave the team the midweek pep talk. This guy could opt out and be totally justified in his decision, but he's sticking with the Tigers. So, offensively, I would give LSU a B. Defensively, LSU obviously was better. They found something in Micah Baskerville. Played a pretty good game. Overall, LSU's defense was tighter. I thought the safety play from Todd Harris and Jacoby Stevens was way better. Uh, They had a lot of open field tackles on Traylon Burks, who is Arkansas's best playmaker. Arkansas, like I said, still outgained you, and that was in large part to the problem that has been plaguing them all year long, these deep passes. Pro football focus here. Felipe Franks was 5 for 5 for targets 20-plus yards down the field. That cannot happen. Problems are still there, and they did a lot better keeping contained. So, kudos to... Bo Pelini for taking a step forward in the right direction. And if he didn't, eh, you, you would have to have someone else call plays. Arkansas was the worst offense that they're going to play the rest of the way. Dead serious. The final four teams are the four best offenses in the SEC. Now, this is the reason why I picked Arkansas to win the game. I knew LSU had all that time to prepare. I thought that that was going to be enough for LSU to win. But the biggest issue to me, LSU's not a great second half team. And for most of the second half, they did have the football, but they were also outscored 
10 to 0 until the final drive. Now, a few of you have sent me messages. I said the Stone Cold Lock of the Century bet of this game was Arkansas winning the second half. And some of you did that, and congrats to you, and Arkansas did. They made adjustments. LSU struggled to adjust to that. LSU had another rough third quarter. Arkansas's had strong third quarters this year coming out of half. So that's another issue. LSU not finishing this game stronger despite having a 20-14 to lead and a huge time of possession lead going into the half. When that happens, you need to come out and stick the dagger through their heart. LSU did not have the killer instinct until the final drive, and that is concerning. So yes, during this awful season, it feels great that LSU got the win against a much improved Arkansas team. I am happy that the Golden Boot will remain in Baton Rouge. This is a rivalry that still means a lot to some people. It may not mean a lot to you, and you might just blow it off that this was just another game. But let's enjoy this victory. Let's really enjoy it. With that said, I'm not sure if LSU, the way that they performed, would have beaten a fully healthy Arkansas team. I'm not sure if they would have beaten a Texas A&M. So that's why it's important to point this stuff out because I want to beat Texas A&M. I hate the Aggies. Hate them. Even though my boy Gabe Bach, I love that dude. I don't like them. I want to win this game so badly, which is why we got to point this stuff out. So yeah, overall, Ed Orgeron was good. You got the win and you move on, but... You know, we, we can't deny that LSU had a lot of advantages. And another big advantage going into Texas A&M was that this game was played at 11 a.m. And LSU was able to get home at a decent hour. Also, shout out to LSU sideline reporter Gordy Rush. Yes, he's a Tottenham fan, but that was a crazy one-handed catch in the rain. Shout out to Gordy. Subscriber shout out, and here's what's great. If you take part in our live streams after the game on Arkansas, it felt good to celebrate a win with you guys. Here's what's really great, though, okay? We're giving out a ton of LSU legendary cards. Shout out to Leslie and shout out to Jonathan winning our Patrick Queen rookie cards, but we're stepping it up. When we get to 2,000 subscribers, we're giving out this autographed, Hollow Prism Greedy Williams card. It could be yours. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel. Eastside Kane and, and a few of you others wanted to point out that there's so many LSU analysts on ESPN, whether it's the Big Swagoo, whether it's Ryan Clark, and yes, former LSU Tigers, of course, make the best analyst. Booger, uh, you know, I'm I'm a big T Bob fan. Now he's a he's a friend of mine. I did a spot with Willie Blackwell last week. I don't know why. I I guess it just works out that way. I uh, I don't know if there's any science behind it. Also, I guess you would say Peter Burns is also an LSU Tiger, and Peter's been a friend of mine for a long time. Even though he didn't play for LSU, he's always been an LSU fan, and he's the host of the SEC Network shows. So, Bash, I've had so many of you. The LSU commit, the three-star who just committed, he was committed to Vanderbilt. And obviously we have a Racy McMath comparison here. And I could see it. I mean, he could be better than Racy McMath. I could see him as a special teamer early on. He's obviously a great athlete. He's got a big frame. Some of you see him moving to tight end in this offense, maybe following the footsteps of Eric Gilbert here in a few years. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited he's a part of this class, a loaded wide receiver class. I am interested to see if LSU takes a fifth receiver in this class if Brian Thomas Jr. decides. So, obviously, we do a lot of recruiting content, and we're going to have another recruiting video later this week, and we'll dive even deeper into the subject. A lot of veterans uh, watch our content, and... That's just really cool. I know we've talked about Warhug, the fireman who watches everything that we do. I didn't know this, uh, that Tony and Romeo and so many of you served in the military until the live stream. And that's what makes it so much fun. 
It's a little more laid back. I get to know you, we interact. So obviously Tuesday nights at seven central and after the games, I answer all your questions. We talk everything LSU football. You do not want to miss. I want to end the video uh, because I don't think we do a good enough job of this following LSU players into the pros and you know, whether it be Clyde Edward Tolaire all the way down to Russell Gage, you know, I like to keep up, whether it's Foster Moreau, but obviously the biggest star in the pros right now is our boy Joe Burrow. And it sucks. It really does suck. And he won't be back until next year. What's going to be fascinating, Cincinnati's going to have a high draft pick. They're going to be around other teams that are going to draft quarterbacks. So I think Cincinnati's going to have a tough decision. They're going to have to decide between Penny Sewell, the great offensive tackle out of Oregon, if he's still there, but Jamar Chase will be there as well. And as much as I like watching A.J. Green, I even have an A.J. Green Bengals uniform, I think the Bengals need another weapon alongside T. Higgins for the future. So... Who better than the team Joe Burrow up with than our boy Jamar Chase? So, yeah, I am very interested to see if that actually happens. So, thanks again to all the support. Texas A&M week. Got to get this dub. Let's go. It's power. Hour. L-S-U. Boom. Bop, bop.